What is a habitat? What is a, ha what is a habitat? Okay, so it's where you live, right? Uh, habitat is the place where an organism lives out its life. What's the habitat of a dolphin? Okay, the ocean. Sweet. So, um, example of habit, examples of habitats, uh, grasslands, that would be a habitat, deserts, uh, the ocean floor, those are all examples of habitat. Now, a habitat is much different than, much different from a niche. What is a niche? A niche is the role and position a species has in its environment. Okay, so it's role and position. And what do we mean by that? We mean how it meets its needs for food and shelter. How does it survive? How does it reproduce? These are all descriptions of the niche of an organism. So it is advantageous to, for a species to occupy a different niche than another. Why is that? Why would that be an advantage? So that they, don't have their own space. they all have their own space. Why is that an advantage? Oh, key word right there, less competition. If every species, if every organism fed on the same thing, would that be a problem? Well, yeah, everybody wants the same food. There's going to be less to go around, and there's going to be more competition and all that stuff. Okay, so it's an advantage if you can occupy a different niche than another species. All right, so we're talking about symbiosis, living relationships. And there are three different living relationships that we're going to look at. But some species enhance their, their chances of survival by forming relationships with other species. I know the one there's a parasite. Okay, there's a parasite. What else is there? Uh, What's that? Mutual. mutual. Okay, mutual has to do with the, one of them. We'll get there. We'll get there. All right, so they're forming relationships with other species, and there are three of these types of living relationships or symbiotic relationships. What, what is this here, a tapeworm? What does that do? It eats you. What do you mean by that? Does it come and, like, bite off your arm or something of that it's sort? It's in raw food. Okay, it can be in raw food. So what does that have to do with me? Okay, so it goes into your, it goes into your intestinal tract. And it takes nutrients from your body, it feeds off of the stuff that's inside of you, and it can cause some significant problems. And they can get pretty long. Um, I've seen some pictures. Like the record is like 60 feet or something? 60 feet? It, it, it wraps around all in your intestines. And uh, I've seen some, exam um, some pictures, I can't remember where I've seen these pictures, where someone has a, a tapeworm that's maybe um, coming out of their leg, and they'd have to attach it to like a pencil and turn it and turn it and then wait until it grows out a little more and then turn it and turn it and eventually it all comes up. But it can be pretty long and pretty disgusting. Yeah. I don't mean to gross you out or anything. Actually, I do mean to gross you out. <laughs> I'm not going to lie. <laughs> all right. So let's look at the three types of living relationships. Living relationship number one, commensalism. Commensalism, and that's a relationship in which one organism benefits and the other is neither harmed nor benefited. So one is happy because it benefits from the relationship. The other, nothing bad happens to it, but nothing good happens to it. Okay? Then the next type of relationship would be one of mutualism. Mutualism, and that's when both species benefit from the relationship. And the last one would be parasitism. And parasitism is when one is benefited and the other is harmed. Okay, so the tapeworm would be an obvious example of a parasite. Um, in terms of commensalism, a good example would be uh, there are hummingbirds when it's time to fly uh, south for the winter. It'd be really hard for a hummingbird to fly south. So what some of them do is they catch rides with others under the wings of other birds and, and they stay in there and as the bigger bird flies, it goes along with it. So it's not using any energy. It's happy. It's benefiting from it. Is the bigger bird benefiting from it? No, right? It's not benefiting. Is it being harmed? No, it's not being harmed. So that would be an example of commensalism. 
Can you think of a, an example of mutualism? I don't know what the fish is called, mm -hmm. what the thing is called, but there's like a fish that like lives, uh, it like cleans other, the, of the alligators or something uh -huh. like that. And, and how does it benefit? It gets food and it just keeps cleaning. yeah, that that's good stuff. That's a good example of mutualism. Also, you have flowers and how do how do plants reproduce? Pollination. pollination. Okay. Um, and how does pollination happen? Bees. bees or wind also, but bees, other, other insects and so on that goes in. And how does the bee benefit? It gets up. It gets the nectar, so it gets nutrients from the 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 um, flower. And then it flies on to another one, and it gets more. But in the meantime, it's transferring the pollen from one to another. So they're both benefiting. That's an example of mutualism. And if I give you examples of these different relationships, you should be able to tell me whether it's commensalism, mutualism, or parasitism.